Cam. Cameron Warsham. Hello. What's up, buddy? Not much. Well, welcome to Building Legacy from the other side of the table. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's I like it back there. I'm yeah. missing my views. Well, we got Dakota running the ones and twos now. Mm-hmm. So we'll see how this goes. It's Dakota's first try. So. We'll see. The music's staying a little say, long. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> He's just smiling you, right now. Do you remember the slide? The music. Slide the music now. Okay. We're just play. He said, "Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah I remember. <laughs> remember. Yeah, I got it." As the music's just jamming yeah. the whole time. Yeah, right, no, perfect. I remember the music. Yeah. yeah. You don't need to remind <laughs> me. That's great. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> you don't ever get to be on camera. No. Like at all for anything. Always behind it. Yeah. So I want to fill some people in on because I I know a little bit about your backstory, right? But I don't mm-hmm. know a whole lot. But you are our creative director. You handle everything media for pretty much all the businesses, building legacy, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. You went to school, right, to do what, what exactly was it that you went to school for? Because I know it was something related to this, but it wasn't like yeah. you had said it's not what you're doing now specifically. Not exactly. A lot, it's incorporated, right. um, but film production. So I mm. went to Huntington University. Um, Is that in Fort Wayne? Pretty much. It's just a little south. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Film production. I studied the camera a lot, like film camera, not just like photography or anything. Um, wanted to be a cinematographer for a long time. And then uh, some things happened and life changes and stuff like that. And passions change a little bit. But I've always been an artist. And yeah. Did sports, because like you ran track mm-hmm. in high school, right? Yep. And was like pretty good at it from what I've heard. I was decent. I've heard pretty good. Hmm. <laughs> um, did sports Big like fish. take you to Fort Wayne or pretty was much. it? Okay. Yeah. So that was like the vehicle uh, that I used. So, so did you know you were going there to do like um, video production and stuff or did you just go? So I, So out of high school, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Uh, towards the end of high school, me and a buddy shot a film or two or something like that. Um, Just for fun? like A little bit. Actually, a teacher of ours. It's so weird how a teacher changes the course of your life. Just, you know, just randomly. That's like the best thing you could probably ever say to a teacher. Probably. Yeah. yeah and I, I sadly, I just saw her too. And I didn't even cross my mind. And then I got to thinking about it. But anyway, so there's an English project. And... I'm terrible at English. Um, Same. Like I, pretty much all the school I was bad at. That's why, you know, I'm a decent artist. Right. Um, so an English project came up and everyone's picking these papers to write and everything. And uh, I don't want to write a paper. So I, me and another friend of mine in the grade beneath me um, come up with an idea to write like somewhat of a script mm. and then shoot it. And, actual, and, and she was the, uh, the yearbook person or whatever you want to call it, yearbook director. So she had all the cameras and stuff. The teacher was or the person that you were working with? The teacher was. Okay. So it was like the perfect, you know, combination. So she had the cameras. I had never really touched a camera before this. Um, Maybe just a little bit, but, but not much. Just good. So yeah, we, so it was like a little Canon, uh, take it. You had to do the, it wasn't like meant for video, it was meant Mm -hmm. for pictures. And so I don't know what, it just didn't, the video was kind of just clunky and crap, but went out and started shooting. And next thing you know, we're shooting our film. And then I don't know if we shot something in between. Can't really remember. But then I was like, you know what? This is pretty cool. It's like painting, but in real life. Right. And uh, yeah, went to school for it. So the, the, but, the person that is doing that project with you, are they still in? So they just graduated okay. um, from the same school, actually. Um, so one of them was Ethan. Oh, okay. So helped set our podcast up. Shout out to Ethan. Yep, shout out to Ethan. Yep. Did a great job. Um, but then the other one's Brody Bowman. And, uh, yeah, he just kind of, I don't know if he followed me necessarily, but it's the closest film school to where we live here in Lima. Right. So um, pretty much went there and. And that was yeah. a, was that two year school, four year school? Four years. Four year yeah. school. Bachelor's of Science. And, oh, okay. That's what I was going to ask. Cause like mm-hmm. the video production part of it, that, that part alone is not a four year degree. No, it is. Oh, it's, damn. It, no, it's legit film production. Like I'm talking 
like right here in this studio, we have cameras, 4K cameras, and then like C stands with right. those are egg crates on the lights on soft boxes. Like it is, and that is like low level. Right. Uh, at Huntington, there's something called they call it Studio A, which is like a huge studio. It's got a I guess it's a psych wall, but it's a green screen, then also white wall, huge spot to film. I've got tracks and dollies and Damn. C, so tons of C stands, flags, diffusion. I mean, the full like they're they're they actually do a pretty good job of bringing Hollywood to the Midwest. I guess I was gonna ask, is there anybody like notable that went there? Um, not I don't think crazy. Of? There, there's a. There's I guess a, notable for me too would have to be like a really big yeah. name for me to know. <laughs> well, we just shot a film, so remember me telling you about that, um, the capstone thing I did for the the yeah. last thing in my school. Mm -hmm. So there's one of the Baldwin brothers was on it. Oh, okay. Shot on it. Uh, he was like one of the main characters. Um, That's a pretty big name. Yeah, it's pretty cool. He's a unique guy. Yeah. Yeah. I think they all are. Yeah. Like all of those Baldwins are pretty unique. Yeah. Yeah. So you went to school. How long was it from graduation until we met? Almost a year. Almost a year. Yes. Damn, actually, a little less than a year. That's actually a pretty think. like fast. Yeah. No, it was super quick. For most quick. people, you know, like they get out of school and then they're like, what the hell am I going to do with this? Yeah. No. So, so the capstone thing happened, mm -hmm. which the capstone thing is a a feature length film use um, and people that work on it, the crew and stuff are seniors and juniors, mostly seniors. It was for the seniors, juniors filled in. Um, but uh, some stuff went down, made me kind of rethink what I was doing on mm -hmm. that thing. Um, it was one of my professor's films and I love, I love that professor. Can but we, I was going to say, are we allowed to bring that up? What went down? Because <laughs> I'll I'll bring it up in short. Just basically that somebody almost like convinced you that this might not be the thing that you want to do, right? Pretty much, not not directly, yeah. but um, just through I don't even know. Just through the experience I had with an individual, tainted the entire thing, and uh, and it was somebody that was in charge, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think yep. that happens to a lot of people. Yeah, and it, and it wasn't even so much person. like I discovered what the what film production was going to be, because there's multiple different levels of film production, and even even on some of the best films, it's not like it doesn't necessarily need to be hundred people crew, hundred people set. Right. You know what I mean? It can still be small. Right. Like um, I can name some off, but it doesn't. It it it's very fluid. Like the the, the working mm -hmm. situation is fluid, right? But this one, it was the, I guess the, the artistic expression was challenged, or at least mine was. Right. And it was just strange. It was very strange. But I've, I've uh, figured out, I've, I've drawn a conclusion to that and a solution moving forward, I guess, from mm -hmm. that experience. But basically, artist you know, puts forth art and this person who is in charge of teaching and guiding uh, me as a senior kind of soiled it a little bit and right. made me kind of rethink. Yeah. Yeah. And so once you graduated, then you had a, a stint to where it was like, do the entrepreneur thing, go on your own freelance, mm -hmm. which we are in a tough part of it, like neck of the woods. Yeah. to be a creative trying to freelance yeah. just because I think we've talked about it on previous podcasts. Like so many people around here, like think that, you know, digital marketing and like podcasts, like mm -hmm. marketing in general, they're just not like up to speed and don't think it's like no. an absolute necessity. They think of it more like a, Oh, that would be nice if I did it, but it's not really going to make that big of a difference. Right. Blah, blah, blah. So what did that, I don't, I don't know, because all I knew was when I had put out the job, right, and I was mm -hmm. like, I'm looking for these people, a, a mutual friend of ours, Rylan, mm -hmm. referred you to me, and you came in and interviewed, and it was like, hey, I have this agency, we'd like to bring you on as a client. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, I don't think I really asked, like, 
how long you had the agency around, you know, like no, you how didn't. many clients. Yeah, yeah, yeah. certainly did. Because I just knew that I was, I had <laughs> known, I had known, I was like, there's no way I could work with just an agency. We have yeah. so much crap going on. Yeah. Um, but I'm curious, like, what did that, why that route instead of, you mm-hmm. know, going to look for a job or looking at a different city or whatever? No, yeah, I, I can answer that entirely. So coming out of school, I got my drone license, bought a drone, put that thing on a credit card, a purchase. Um, now I was like, you know That's what? That's always a good start for an entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was like, you know, we're going to go, we're going to try this route because I had read some things and watched some videos and, and – they make they can make like two hundred dollars an hour, right? Mm-hmm. So that's the thing floating in my head, like oh I can do this. Oh, like make the drone make you money? You mean? Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, and I'll pay it off, and it'll be no big deal, and whatever. And then naturally, you have a client that wants to be on camera, mm-hmm. and so okay, well now I have to get the hand camera, like the you know the actual camera out, and then you have to figure in which is a larger conversation, but no one wants to pay for video around here. Right. Very little. And no one really understands the value of marketing and putting forth your story here in in this Midwestern spot. Right. And there is a few, but there's so few and far between. Like it's insane how small amount of people there is that are trying to do this. I mean, it's to the point where like, there's there's just not enough competition like if there was a like take for example fort wayne Mm -hmm. right that's a growing city and when there's growth like when there's you know there's multiple opportunities to better your business right and if you don't better your business the next guy is the next guy is right right? right and so what is one of the ways that you can get ahead yeah social media um exposure Mm -hmm. that type of thing so you kind of have to have in my opinion that's totally anecdotal. That's just all my opinion. Right. But you have we to have... We value your opinion around here, so Thank let you. it fly, buddy. Um, you have to have that that competitive push for businesses. So down here in Lima, mm-hmm. there is not much of a competitive push for businesses. No. There's not many... Um, there's not many same businesses. It's like... You know, the one that's been here has been here for 80 years, right. and that's just about it. And it's like, well, we don't care if we make any more money. We don't care if we grow our name right. or whatever. Right. Um, a lot of complacency. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so when there's complacency, there's no room to grow. Mm-hmm. And so the, the video and the social media and all that digital crap, it doesn't leave room for you to really do anything. Right. And then drone is like even a step further. You can get by with some cool drone stuff, but no one wants to pay the prices that I guess people pay in big cities. Right. Yeah. So, right. so that led me to you with the um, the marketing agency, media agency I was doing, and um, I guess I can talk on. I don't really need to, but why it got there. But no, yeah, I'm curious, like, because we've never really discussed it. Not, like, yeah, it was literally from interview, and then it was me being like, I don't know, dude, I don't think I could do it with an agency. Like, I really mm-hmm. need somebody in house, blah, blah blah. And there was a good chunk of back and forth mm-hmm. in between, and it, it was a, I think, like, probably two, three weeks, maybe a month. Actually, it was, it was probably, a while. It was yeah, it was a at while, at least a month, yeah, like in between because I was waiting for you to give me that quote because yeah. I was starving, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I basically so had the drone, have the camera, trying to chase all these jobs, trying mm-hmm. to find jobs. Um, like I'm talking churches, businesses. I went into, well, I won't say that. <laughs> uh, just trying to find <laughs> jobs. When you say that, it makes me want to know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a funny story. <laughs> okay. but uh, We'll tell right. it off camera. Yeah, sure. Um, trying real hard to find jobs. Anyway, I... Um, started to think like in what ways could my video be um be used better or or are there ways to can i order fries and a burger and mm-hmm. would that satisfy my client more you know what i mean right because if i just give them like fries well how are they gonna have a full meal there like or how are they gonna satiate right. themselves so i started getting into like i have a buddy one of my good buddies uh he does web Oh God! Like computer coding, web stuff, oh, yeah, yeah. builds web websites. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> I was like, okay, maybe me and Ryan could do something together. My video could sit on his platform, 
Okay. Like, right. So his website. So I, I was like, okay, I'll go to a business and I'll go, hey, we'll supply a website and we'll shoot all your videos. Gotcha. We'll, so we'll do interviews. Yeah, you're we'll trying do, to add more to your menu, basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then also it like legitimizes to some degree in my mind right. the service rather than just some random dude showing up. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> That's not a bad then, thought. No. Yeah. So then I, um, Rylan connected me to another friend of mine, um, Cassidy, the social media. Mm hmm girl yep. um and i was like okay great well we can my videos can sit on cassidy's social media stuff and then i'll also start making a thing where you know what we're gonna we're gonna do something where every if everyone's freelancing everyone already has their own clients so let's make a business group and this is after i went to ryland with mm -hmm. me and i um let's make a business group so to speak and Basically, I'd give like different amounts of kickbacks or whatever. This was the idea. Yeah. If you push business into someone in our little business group. So gotcha. that way I could absorb Ryan's clients, Cassidy's clients, right. a couple other people's clients. Yeah. That way it makes money. Right. So anyway. Everybody feeds everybody. Right. At, yeah. the, at the somewhat of the height of this, mm -hmm. feeling cocky a little bit, Ryan connects me with you and I come up here and... and give you the biggest quote number that I, I've ever given <laughs> anyone. So I was like, yeah, this is... This is this is too much, but no, but it, the issue wasn't ever like the quote. The issue was that it was very hard for me to like really explain the level of like attention mm -hmm. that I knew that we were going to need. And I see it now. I mean, right. It's not, it's not possible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. And I told you, I think I'd mentioned, like I had talked to a couple of agencies and it was like, I know like if you do take me on as a client, I know because we have so much going on, I know I'm going to be like that nagging person mm -hmm. just like, hey, need you here. Hey, we need you this. Well, it just and it's not going to be, it's not going to be, time. yeah, it, there's no way that it would have been like lucrative for you because of the amount of time that I would have taken yeah. up and you would have had to pass up on clients yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. But either way, it worked out great. It so you had your interview. It freaking great. Yeah. yeah. You had your interview. Mm -hmm. I remember the, you had texted me or called me. And was like, hey, uh, need the numbers, blah, blah, blah. And then you sent the quote. And then I was just busy and whatever. And now you see, like, I promise I wasn't no. just ghosting you. Yeah, no, um, it's, it's true. It's, no, and then you, I was like, yeah, let me look at it, get back to you, whatever. And then before I really had a chance to, like, fully respond, you had called me. I have I was actually walking in the back of the Allentown house. I was in the backyard mm. just walking in circles when I was talking to you. <laughs> and you had got a hold of me and was like, so, um, cause I told you consider full time, like just mm -hmm. think about it. Let me know what you think, blah, blah, blah. And you were like, dude, let's talk more about this full time thing. Yeah. That was like, for me, it was like, it's sales pitch time because up to that point, like my whole thing with interviewing all these people was I don't want to have to sell, sell somebody mm -hmm. like I want them to be able to see the vision, see what we got going on, you know, and like yeah. just want to dive in. You were the first person that like circled back and was like, I'm actually interested in this. Mm -hmm. And to me, that was enough to be like, all right, maybe he's getting it. And then now I just need to pour in more information of like, yeah. all right, this is everything. Because up to that point, you definitely didn't have an idea of everything that Not we were trying to do and all that stuff. And we had it. I didn't really even know you were going to run. Like, I didn't know you right. were even running. Yeah. Yeah. No idea. Yeah. You didn't know about, like, the idea of the building legacy and all that stuff. Nope. It was just like, I think I want to shoot a podcast. I want to do this. I want to mm -hmm. do that. And uh, we left it pretty vague. But then yeah. that, that conversation went awesome because you were just, I was like, listen, I want somebody that wants to tell this story. And this is the story that I'm looking to put out there. Mm -hmm. And since then, you've ran with it. Tried. Yeah. I mean, the biggest thing it. was in the interview because obviously like I have a ton of friends who just get out of college and they go to corporate media, mm -hmm. right? Which is to some degree areas for my demise. Like I would, I'd hate that. Yeah. It, it, cause you're, you're really you're taking an artist locked in a box, right? You're taking yeah. an artist and you're just draining them. Like right. it, it's, and you could have the argument, maybe not everyone who does video is an artist. I, Fair, mm -hmm. right? right? If I was in that situation, dead. Right. Um, what hooked me was how you were like, there's, it's more than just, it's more than just the corporate 
video. There's, mm-hmm. there's something we want to actually pour into and something that we want to really push like, and, and change lives and make an impact and stuff. And it was like, yeah. number one, impact, fantastic, because that, that means the shots have more weight to they them, matter. or at least they can. Yeah, yeah. and the, yeah. the story as a whole means like when you're editing, you can thread them together, the, just the potential for good storytelling as a whole and using cinematography as a vessel or as a vehicle right. is was that sold me i was like cool i don't i don't know what's gonna happen but <laughs> we're, we're gonna, gonna go it. with it yeah <laughs> so you actually said that to me the other day i don't remember what we were doing but i was like so cam what is your goal here like what mm-hmm. is what is the ultimate goal because obviously like my goals i put out there like you know i i have to relay that information to you and everybody else around us like mm-hmm. everybody knows what my goal is and I'd ask you, like, what's your goal? And you, your answer was, I just want to tell really cool stories. Yeah. But I want to know more. Like, what, what is it about, like, telling the story? And what type of stories are you wanting to tell? Mm-hmm. Like, or because you, don't, you just don't seem like a person that's willing to just go tell a random story. Mm, yeah. You know, like, if somebody was like, I want you to come shoot my horse farm and tell the story of <laughs> all my horses. That is so funny you just said that. Really? <laughs> Maybe that's a different conversation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But um, no, I'm, I'm, I want, I want to know more about like what it is about the storytelling and sure. why that's yeah. important. To you. Um, so that was really the main reason why I went to school was to tell stories. It wasn't so much with my fascination of the camera. Mm-hmm. Like I I don't have a fascination with really anything. It's just really stories and all these other things are my vehicles to get the story told, I guess. Right. Um, I don't know. It probably stems from a few different places. Probably one, like my dad was a storyteller and he'd always be telling stories. And whenever we'd tell stories, I'd be either laughing or like on the edge of my seat or like hunting stories. Mm -hmm. I come from a family that hunts a lot and you'd go down there and all the guys would be standing around. And it is the same story just told with like minute differences. Yeah. Oh, Jim was over there on the hill and, and uh, <laughs> he rolled up on his forward. Just the same old, same old, same old. Uh-huh. And it, but it, but it's just funny. And and as I as I grow up, you know, my knowledge of Jesus and and the Bible kind of deepens, I guess. And and I've always I my first class with um, Matt Webb, one of my professors at college. He said that's where I get the. Jesus told like over 200 stories and mm-hmm. parables and stuff to one sermon. And that quote has kind of shaped my progress as a, as a storyteller, I guess. Right. Um, Cause when you really get into it, like the parables that he tells and the stories that he tells, they, they pass. I think I just said this the other day, they pass the ego and they pass that barrier that, you'd have it. So like, let's say me and you are having a conversation or even an argument rather, Mm -hmm. and you're doing something wrong. And I tell you, you're doing something wrong. It doesn't hit you maybe because of the ego, maybe because of, you know, my experience in that place or whatever. Right. And it, it, there's a barrier there partially because it's coming from one flawed individual to another. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but with, with stories, they pass through that, that barrier and you assimilate yourself with the main character. Right. You know, you become whatever that main character is, or you become a part of that story without even trying. So it reaches a part of the, the soul that humans can't necessarily reach face to face. And it gets across a message. And I, so I guess at the heart of all that storytelling just kind of gets across a message. And I'm, I'm, I guess I've always been interested in, in non-ambiguous art. I guess that that would probably summarize it pretty well. Because I hate when you go up to a painting mm-hmm. and you're like, oh, what does this mean? And you're all like, you know, staring into it. And right. it's just all ambi- That's meaningless. Mm-hmm. It, it's just meaningless to me. Um, I feel the same way. And I love art. Like, mm-hmm. I, I've showed you some of my paintings. Yeah. I could put them on the screen um, when I edit this <laughs> later. But... Um, I, I, I can at least move the, like the brush. Well, like I can, I can copy a picture almost one for one, but it's without like a message to some degree, it's just meaningless. Right. It's just all meaningless. So 
I think that's a great. I mean, that's a great reason that I don't. My know summation could, doing okay. No, and I don't think that you could have a better reason, really. Like, because that's it's very similar to why I do what I do. Like, I want to tell a story that lasts for a long time. Mm-hmm. And my story is just, you know, it's different than other people's story, but I want to put my story out there so that it, it has meaning and affects people. Yeah. And there might be like a deeper, there might be a deeper connection than just the message. It might be a form of communication and maybe at the heart of it, it's just connecting one person to another, right? Or to some degree, something like that. I haven't Well, let me ask you this then. Enough. I mean, do you have an idea of like, Ideally, what type of stories do you want to tell? Or do you just want to tell stories in general? No, I, I know what stories I want to tell. Um, so, stories, if you're thinking about them in the way that I'm thinking about them, m- meaning like they have a message, there's a moral mm-hmm. to the story, right? Right. There, that's when story as a... As a like an art, something that you can manipulate and, and change throughout the course of time to result in a message. So like one plus one equals two. Mm-hmm. And with story, once you dive into it, once you you know, know how to tweak it and change it and, and move right. it around, we've talked a little bit about it. Mm-hmm. But once you know how to do that, then you can craft a message inside of it. Also, while you keep of you are engaged. It's like this, this dichotomy between I'm holding a, a, a wealth of information that, that will be good for you. Right. right. But you have to also incorporate, this needs to be fun to watch. This needs to be cool to watch. Mm -hmm. I need to somehow identify with what I'm watching to some degree. Yeah. Um, and through that, that little dichotomy, you get, the treasure at the end and the treasure can change your life. It Mm -hmm. could for the better, right? That's the whole idea. So that's an even better way to put what we've been talking about because so we're shooting the documentary of the ultra, right? mm -hmm. And we've been looking at, you know, other subject videos of other people's ultra documentaries and all that stuff on YouTube. And the common thread that we've both agreed on is like, do we just want to shoot another ultra? Right. Like, do we just want to shoot another, this is me running 100 miles? Mm-hmm. No. Do we just want to shoot another, this is how I got to the point to run 100 miles as far as, like, this was a little bit of my training, and then, you know, the, here's the document of the race. Right. No. No. We want to tell the story of why am I running 100 miles? What, like, how did that, does that 100 miles correlate with all the lead up to it and the story behind it so it actually has purpose? Right. And I think that that's a big piece of what people are missing. And like, there's videos that I know that I pass over that probably have just as good as of information yep. as other videos. Yep. But it's either, you know, not fun. It's not engaging. It's not like they're not telling the story and like making me dig to the treasure or whatever. Yeah. And I, I even when I started in real estate, there's a guy named uh, Pace Morby. So he's like, mm-hmm. he's one of the biggest creative finance people on YouTube now and now he's like talking to Grant Cardone and all this stuff Mm -hmm. so I started following his videos like before he blew blew up and I would watch his videos and be like entranced for hours and days like Mm -hmm. I learned so much stuff from his videos but he was he told his story he gave context like he made it fun he was like a very relatable person all that stuff Mm -hmm. and then I would come like you know once I burnt through most of his videos I went looking for more information on those subjects I came across people that I know probably had great information, but I just couldn't sit there and soak it in because no. it like wasn't grabbing me. Yeah, that's the it's a mystery. It really is, and I think that's the the attractiveness to good stories. Yeah, I mean, like you could think in Die Hard's a good story or something like that. It's like an action. You've mm-hmm. seen Die Hard? Yeah. But Braveheart. <laughs> I know we talked about Braveheart. When we bring up Braveheart, Braveheart yeah. is next level, mm-hmm. and there's many reasons why. The entire thing is is moving toward a a resolute a result, 
Like it, it, it's, there is a result. What is the answer? Or, or to Braveheart, it is, what is the cost of freedom? Mm -hmm. And everyone along the way is trying to shake him off that, that result. Right. Even down to, you know, the girl brings him the vial of poison to kill himself so that he doesn't get tortured. Mm -hmm. And we're on the edge of our seat because we're like, oh, well, we don't know what he's going to do. Right. And then he, he spits out the poison, goes and... Anyway, it's a beautiful film, but it's laced with... It's also shot beautifully, but it's laced with that meaning of purpose. And it's, mm -hmm. it's, and, and, but you're on the edge of your seat learning out, okay, what is the price of freedom? You know, what does it take for people to get freedom? And his example changes everyone around him, which is a flat character. But that's a little bit of knowledge for. <laughs> See, then you get into the technicalities, and yeah. then I don't know where it's at. Yeah. <laughs> but well, no, I agree. While. I agree. Uh, so let me ask you this: I know what you know. My purpose is mm -hmm. as far as like why I do what I do. You've how long have you been with us now? A few months. Three, Three months. months. Three months? Three, four months? You started in winter. Like, it was definitely cold. We met in winter. You st it was like 40 degrees in here when you were working in here. That's true. It wasn't. Yeah, because yeah, I took my mom's heater up here. Yeah. yeah. yeah no, no, no. So yeah, it's right. been a good, yeah, I'd say three or four months at okay. least. Um, it goes but anyways, fast. yeah, it's flying. But I'm curious, what do you think building Legacy's story is? Like, mm. because ultimately... I've told you this many times, you know, I have ideas I'm willing to put in the work, you know, that's necessary to like get the message across and like to show that there's legitimacy behind the things that I talk about or mm -hmm. that we talk about or the people that we bring on and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, like I've told you many times, you're the person that's in charge of telling this story in whatever way you see fit. Like mm -hmm. your title is creative director and we are 100% good with you directing whatever path we take, you know, the business's yeah. message, building legacy's message. So I'm curious what ultimately, because, you know, we have like little messages that we want to hit here and then here, but right. overall, what is that, that story? That so we're I haven't really fleshed it out yet, like in, into words. Mm -hmm. um, but we've talked about a bit of society here and I, I've just mentioned it today a little bit of there seems to be a push like like society's on a swing in a way mm -hmm. and it goes back and forth and, and maybe too far in one direction and it, then it overcorrects back the other direction and i think building legacy is somewhat of an answer somewhat of a solution to where society's at um in today's day and age and i think um men have a responsibility to uphold their families and, and be the best that they can be to mm -hmm. put into extremely short words. Um, and so you act as a vessel um, of change, pretty much. Mm -hmm. you, are the, you are the main character in this movie. And what is it called? Flagstaff? Flagship? Would you say? He's the flag something character? Um... Yeah, I don't know. I did say that, though. Flag <laughs> something. Flag something character. Anyways, that was Braveheart. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but you are the main character in this mm -hmm. story, but the main character is not themselves. The main character is the audience. Right. Or it's who the audience could be or you know who the audience... In action that the audience could portray. You right. know what I mean? So in hopes... You being the vessel of change, we can bring on the change of others in a positive right. direction. So, um, and I think that's what society is is pushing for currently, and I think it will over time push in this general direction. All the things that we stand for and yeah. believe in, and which is something that we've been talking about. Like we know in our heads, you know, this is what building legacy is for. This is who it's for. This is what it's about. But it's never been put, you know, into core values or specific, you know, this is where we draw our lines. This is where we don't stuff like that. And you nailed it like that's to me. 
I hate saying things like this because it sounds so self-righteous. Like in my mind, it sounds so braggy and self-righteous and just whatever. But that really is exactly what I want to do. Like I just want to be a vessel. I just want somebody to see me. And I feel like it's going to be a lot easier to, to get that across for the people that know me or knew me before. Yeah. yeah. And it's probably going to be harder for the people, you know, coming into it fresh and just being like, well, that's not really this dude owns this many businesses yeah. and has all this going on. But the people that seen me, you know, 290 pounds broke as shit. Yeah. Like all that. It's going to be a lot easier to get that message across and make it to where it's like this stuff that we talk about. It's not new information. No. Like it's not. I think I don't remember what the quote was exactly, but there's somebody that I've seen that's like, there's no new information ever. Like everything that mm. you think about or implement or somebody else has thought about it, said it, done it, whatever. Yeah. It's just cycled and recycled and recycled. And that's all that we're doing essentially is I'm taking all the things that I've soaked in over a long period of time mm -hmm. and didn't necessarily like execute on right away, but that I was putting in the tool belt, putting in the tool belt. And then when it was my time to, you know, it's time to execute. I was able to pull all those tools out and I want to be able to pass that tool belt onto somebody else and shorten their window. That's exactly like, right. Yeah. Don't wait until you're freaking 26, 27 to start getting your life t together. Right. Like I did. Right. Do it at 16. Do it at nine. <laughs> like, yeah. do, you know, hopefully somebody's dad's watching this and it's going to start thinking about like, what message am I giving my sons? Mm -hmm. What type of image am I portraying to my daughter? Mm -hmm. No, I mean, you suffered finding out the the cures of your life, I guess, or just right. of 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 a young adult life, right? Mm -hmm. Made just about every mistake possible, maybe, right? I mean, literally it, every mistake possible. So you found out the hard way, so others don't have to, I guess. And that's right. you know a pretty simple way to understand it. But yeah. it's like here, here, it's like here's your what is the monopoly thing? Um, collect 200 at go or whatever, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, here's your Pascal. Yeah. yeah here's your, it, it, this is, it's free. It's free knowledge and it's free experience and it's, and it's I sad. got so much of it free. What do you mean? Oh, oh, you mean just from YouTube and speakers Dude, and yeah, just YouTube and, and just the people that I've been blessed to like cross paths with mm -hmm. just, you know, out of God's plan and just out to me at the time, you know, before I renewed like my faith, it was out of sheer luck. Mm -hmm. Like now, obviously I know that it's because there was a plan laid out for me and I just had to go through all that stuff to get there. But yeah, I mean, most of it was free. I mean, I paid the price in you know, depression and anxiety and being 290 pounds and having no purpose and all of those things. But in all reality, like aside from just some hard work, mm -hmm. it was free. And it just cost time. Yeah. That's the only thing it costs. And so that, honestly, that's the only thing we can give you is just saving time. Right. I mean, that, that's yeah. really it. Saving time and potentially a lot of money and potentially heartache. Right. And it's, so. it's, and it's, it's not a shortcut. Like, no, it, it's not a shortcut. Cause there, there's literally, I've tried every shortcut. Like I've tried get rich quick shortcuts. I've tried lose <laughs> pounds fast shortcuts. I've tried every shortcut that there is. I've tried. I'll tell you what it is though. The only thing they have to pay is um, they have to pay their ignorance because once you hear the truth, I don't think you can go back. Uh, was that to you, Dakota, that we were just talking to? Was I talking to you about that or was I talking to Cam about that? Probably, about the fact that you can't... It's probably me. Was it you? Yeah. Because it was the five in the morning stuff, waking up. Yes. Because I was like, I, can't, I, I, I will always know that there's a pocket of time in my days now mm -hmm. ever since I was like, you know what? We're just going to... We're going to knock these 5 a.m.s out and then pull them back to four, right? Yeah. There's just a pocket of time that you can have that is practically free. And it's like I'm tired at the end of the day anyway if I wake up at eight or if I wake up at seven. Right. I'm tired at the end of the day anyway. I don't want to do any work. It's like that pocket of time, I'm not more tired at the end of the day. I'm just tired. It's just the same kind of tired. I've just done more, yeah. at least for me, you know, in my body. In my and to me, that's sleep. like, it's it sounds so... When we were just at the 5K, a guy I know came by and was like, oh, Mr. 4 a.m. Club. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, 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 yeah. That was so cool. <laughs> that was funny. But it sounds like such a simple thing, but it's like even those things, right? Like I had heard it from other people. 
but I had heard it from billionaires. Mm-hmm. I had heard it from, you know, like people that I was like, it was Kobe Bryant, you know, mm-hmm. people that I was like, that does not apply to me. And then I finally heard, started hearing it from people that I was like, okay, like if they're able to do it, maybe I really am able to do this. Right. And it's such a simple thing, but it's like just that alone, the fact that I can work 12 hours, I can work four to five, take an hour lunch and work a 12 hour day. If I do that five days a week, I'm working 60 out and I can still take Saturday and Sunday off. Mm-hmm. I don't usually, but I could. Mm-hmm. I'm still working 60 hours in a week compared to somebody working 40. It is impossible to put in that amount of extra effort than somebody else and not blow by them. No matter what field you're in, if you're a golfer yeah. and they're golfing 40 hours a week and you're golfing 60, you're going to blow by them. Fitness, like being a dad, whatever it is, if you're putting in that much extra of work, mm-hmm. you're going to get there faster. Something that I noticed too, um, and this probably won't apply to everyone, but there are some people that like if you're struggling to go to bed at night, mm-hmm. there's because I because I'm speaking to myself. If you struggle to go to bed you at night, you didn't do enough shit during. You the really night. didn't do enough, and that's hundred percent. And it's, it's I fall asleep sad in to eight think that seconds flat, dude. but like <laughs> eight seconds. Flat. I'm telling you, <laughs> yes. some like like my mind runs too fast. If, if I don't wake up early, like that early, mm-hmm. let's say generally five. Yep, ballpark five. If I don't wake up that early, I do not have enough time in the day to spend all my gas. Like I, I will, yeah. I, there's literally, my brain does not shut down if I don't wake up that early. Mm-hmm. Unless I, you know, maybe I have a huge workout or something like well, that. that or, but, but no, that's a great way of putting it is like you don't have enough time to expend all the gas. Yeah. Like I, I will be up till two in the morning. Like mm-hmm. I, I just cannot help it. Like my brain will not stop. Don't care if I've got the blue light glasses or I turn the midnight mode on my, mm-hmm. on my phone. It doesn't matter. My brain will run. Like, yeah. So you just, you almost have to wake up and really put your foot on the gas pedal all day. Yep. Go to bed and do it again. I was a at one better. time in my life, a night owl. I'd stay up till four in the morning, five, but it's because I wasn't doing shit all day. Yeah. Like it's because I was literally sitting around expending no energy on exercising, no mental energy because I was in a job that I didn't even have to use my brain for the most part. Mm-hmm. Like I was literally just, you know, I'm a robot at that point, just doing stuff that's mindless. Yep. So then I get home and I had to play with my mind. Like I had yeah. to do stuff that was just, you know, like interesting to me or doom scrolling even mm-hmm. because I just didn't exert all that during the day. I get done with, like I'll be done here on like a day here. Of, mm-hmm. I don't know whatever we're doing. Usually it's editing because we have so much to edit. Um, if you're an editor, get y- a hold of us. Yeah, <laughs> hey man. If you're an editor, yeah. we need you, please. <laughs> Why'd you cut on that? I was looking at the camera. You can tell when he cuts. Yeah, they have uh, recording lights. Really? I did not know that. Um, but I'll I'll uh, one day here. If I edit all day, my brain is fried. Right, gone. I'm talking couch mode because <laughs> it's just all that mental mm-hmm. energy gone if you if you legitimately but this message so this is just one thing obviously that like i kind of want to hit on and just like what building legacy is about and it's not that we're like we're about people waking up early it's that we are trying our best to be about and get others to be about just drain in that rag of everything like of every drop of water in it and just treating your days like that well even on top of that it's it's like okay so let's say you're a man who actually wants to do something right you want to change your life Mm -hmm. you have the desire to change your life right that's all you need yeah well well it's like okay here's a tool to help fix your desire in a way to Mm -hmm. help satiate that desire wake up earlier it, yeah. that, that desire will propel you. If you don't have the desire, that's a different conversation. Right. Right. But if you do have the desire, here's one of the tools that we can, that we give you to help, you know. And the fact that you just said it that, it, it's that alone has been one of our like most frequent conversations yeah. is are we talking at all to the people that don't have a desire 
to be the mm. absolute best version of themselves that they can possibly be. Mm-hmm. And we had to settle on like, no, this is not for somebody that does not want to be better and like has the desire to better themselves and better their lives. Because at the end of the day, like we want to make sure that we're being transparent and like true to ourselves. Right. And we know that everybody that's works with us around us, like are those type of people. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to, because right now in this day and age, like everybody wants to not offend anybody wants to say the right thing, wants to make sure that everybody's included in, you know, what the message that they're putting out there and stuff. And I feel like we're on the opposite end of that. And it's not that we're like coming at it as like, if you're lazy, we don't want to talk to you. Like get the hell out of here. Right. It's like, if you don't have any desire, then nothing that we're going to talk about is going to apply to you, but we're not going to withhold our, our true selves and the information and message that we want to put out there to make you comfortable when it's going to be a detriment to the people that we actually want to work with and talk to and help and have around us. Yep. Like I'm, it's just going to fall on deaf ears. Yeah. So at the end of the day, it's just, we're wasting it. Right. Don't cast your pearls to the swine. Yeah. And it's, it's tough though, because generally I think that we're, you know, all of us that work here are nice people, you know, like we're somewhat of people pleasers. Like we want, you know, we want people Mm -hmm. to to enjoy our content and stuff like that. But it's like, at at what cost do you talk to the masses when the people that we're really wanting to affect are going to suffer from that? I I, I just think it's so far outside of our wheelhouse of a conversation. It's not even to answer the question of why, why do you not have a desire? That is so far. It's not even in the realm. The blinders though. Like what do you mean? once your blinders are off to your life and you're like, oh my God, I'm leaving so much on the table. Like I got to get my ass in gear and I want to be the best version of myself. It is hard to look at, talk to, be around yeah. people that are not. No, I'm sure. It, but fe- what it makes is you the feel thing? like a dick. But I'm sure it does. But what's the thing that takes the blinders away? Because I, I would argue it's not necessarily anything said. Now, if someone came up to you and said, Hey, you're slacking, right? You need Mm -hmm. to get your life together. It's not going to be enough. I don't think it's enough. I feel like there has to be an outside circumstance or something, something looking in, you know, I know what mine is. What is it? It's my dad Mm. pretty much. And that, and from that, that like getting that that approval or just like not letting some degree, to some degree it, it, that stems from, or or not stems from, from that, you know, comes, okay, I want to be a good man. I want to be a good husband someday. Mm-hmm. I want to, you know, make an adequate amount of money to where I can pursue a passion. Mm-hmm. This is kind of a passion too, but right. um, just those checklist things start happening. Boom, 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 boom. I want a good house. I want a good part of town. I want to, I don't know, do something with my money that's just not consuming. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I, like I just consume with this money. Right. Um, yeah, and so all that kind of stems from my dad in a way. So he's like the monkey on my back in a, in a, in a sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and it might not be like that for everyone, but I think, it, I think for men, it, a lot of it is. There's somewhere in the Bible it says that uh, fathers are like the son's God as mm-hmm. they grow up. Yeah, I think you, you talked about that when we were on our way to Top Golf. Yeah. I'd never heard that before. And I probably murdered it too. It probably no, isn't it's really very, correct. No, I mean, it's very... Very true. It's like kids grow up wanting to please their God in a way, mm-hmm. you know, and, and also on the flip fathers, it shows them like how responsible or just how much responsibility they have like over their right. kid. Cause you're not just a dad. You're, you're the, you know, you're the creator and, and, and the, of everything you're, you, you mm-hmm. are the you're what the, the child looks to, you know, to be safe, to see what's good, what's bad, what's whatever. And yeah. so it's more than just the father. It's like you're a creator in a way. Mm-hmm. Shaping and I that think that that, that so like your why is, you know, the approval of your father, just pleasing him and stuff. I think a lot of people have that switch when they become a father. Yes. Like yeah. having a child usually switches it to where you're like, oh my God, I got to get this together. Mm -hmm. 
that was so neither of those are mine though interesting and i like my son definitely saved my life zero doubt about it but even having him wasn't enough i was still making dumb mistakes doing things that i shouldn't be doing blah blah but it was enough to get me to like tap the brakes Mm-hmm. Like I didn't turn the car around like I probably should have, and been but like I'm questioned. going in a total. I start it sparked a little bit. Yeah. More than anything, though, mm. it got me thinking about the what ifs. Like, what if I just kept going this way the rest of my life? Mm. What is that going to look like? Like, what type of dad am I going to be? Fast forward. Am I going 10 to be years, twenty years? Yeah. And like my biggest fear was like I've talked about on here, like my, my like set out path for me my whole life was to go play football. And then once that was gone, I was like, I have no purpose. Mm-hmm. And it ate me up that I like stopped pursuing that and all that stuff. And I'm like, so my whole life's just going to be full of what ifs. Like I'm just going to be 500 pounds and mm-hmm. a crappy dad that can't go throw, even throw the football in the backyard. So mine is still to this day. It's, I think it's just, and I honestly, I don't even know this for certain, but I think it's just the what ifs. Like I can't stop what ifing myself mm-hmm. if that's a, if that's a thing, but I just can't stop that's thinking about like when I see people doing that, I'm like, what if I could do that? Like, what if I could do that? You know, what is my limit? What is my boundary? What that's, is, that's what can I, exactly where, right. where am I at the wall? Right. You know, I mean, often the thing I say in my brain isn't what if it's, if that person's doing it, I definitely can. There's there's no shot in the world that I can't do it. It's, I mean, doesn't don't you feel like what arrogant is. thinking that way? But a little bit, but I know. But it's hard to not. I look at things the same way. I say all the time. I'm like, if that person's a millionaire, there's no that's way ex- I can't be a billionaire. That's exactly <laughs> like, what I'm saying. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, but I, I think mean, that men should think that. I think that men sh- men need to stop being apologetic for wanting to be great. Like, I think the same thing it has to stop like and i still have an issue doing that like i i still have an issue dialing back like dimming my light to not make others feel uncomfortable for not going as hard as i really want to because you know it's going to make me look this way to this part i'm still working through that right now but it is in general Mm -hmm. like men just need to stop being so apologetic for wanting to be great like you're a man that's what right. you're supposed to do. The you're supposed to be important. the leader. You're supposed to be the head. Like, right. That's what you're here for. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I, I don't know. It's a. It's a. It's always been a question to me. Like, seeing. Seeing the desire die in someone, it's like, how is that possible? Like, how can you live with? I wouldn't. I would. I wouldn't live with myself. Like, I couldn't. The the voice in my head would just pretty much peel the wallpaper off my skull like i just it is death by a thousand cuts cam because i've been there i'm telling like i was very very close to the point of like messing my life up so much that there was no turning back like there was going to be no amount of work that i was going to be able to put in maybe not no amount of work that might be a little over but very very close like very close and it is literally and and i know that there's going to be guys watching this that are in that spot right now it is death by a thousand cuts. It is walking by a mirror and looking and just being like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Waking up, feeling tired, like sitting there eating and knowing that you shouldn't be eating. Mm. Going to a job and being like, why the fuck am I here? Like, I know I'm not supposed to be here. I'm just wasting time. Being in, re- like, and all of that just compounds. Like, because then you're in a relationship that you know you should have left a long time ago. Mm-hmm. You're, you're being a person. Like, m- for me, it was... I was super argumentative. I was very like, I've never been like physically aggressive with a woman in my life, but I was very like verbally aggressive and combative and like, it just trickled down to everything. Mm -hmm. And it's because I was like that little bit of light that I had left of desire was so close to being completely burnt out Mm. and I knew it and I felt it. And that's why to me, it's like, there's no other, of course I'm putting in work and stuff, but for me personally, there's no other explanation for it besides God. Like God took control of my life hmm. and put me down the path that I needed to because I tried to do it all on my own. Like, you know, I, I didn't talk to people about how I was feeling. I didn't, 
talk to my girlfriends about, you know, I, I want to be a better man. Like, stop, hold me more accountable. Stop mm-hmm. letting me get in these arguments where I'm raising my voice to you and screaming at the top of my lungs. And I had tried to fix that stuff on my own, was never capable mm. for a 13 year stretch. Like, that's a long time to be trying to put in work and getting no outcome. And then yeah. I turned, turned to the thing that had worked in my life until I walked away from it. And when I turned back, things just started falling in place. Hmm. It's interesting. But even if that's not God for a lot of people, like if, if you're not a believer of God or a higher power, it's just the fact that you can't do it alone. Like find hmm. people to hold you accountable that you can mentor from, that that's you can point. learn things from that are doing better than you and get those people around you. Yeah. Because you can't do it by yourself. Well, it's kind of funny you're on to that point because I think I mentioned to you not too long ago just the, you know, you started doing something like the running and the working out and everything like that. And, mm-hmm. and then that slowly has bloomed into like it's, it's just bled. O- it's like an effect that bled over into many different people and in, in many of your businesses. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's interesting to see how, you know, in a community, like, cause let's say easy is a community, right. which it kind of is to some yeah. degree. Um, in the community, people want to, people want to be better. Like mm-hmm. it, if their community is, you know, on the up and up. Yeah. It's just interesting how nobody wants to have the crappy house on the nice block. Right. Right. So maybe given maybe the formation of a community, maybe won't inspire a change immediately, but over the course of time, um, because they want to assimilate to that community or, or that culture, whatever. Yeah. I noticed that a lot in runners. Cause I've, I've when I ran track in college, mm-hmm. my God, the long distance people, it was like a cult. Yeah, it wasn't a community. It was the a community cult. is phenomenal. Uh, well, I'm just saying the running community in general. I don't okay, know about, okay. Like, you know, high level athletics, yeah. but just the for me, it has been sure. Like they're just so supportive. I probably saw a different side of. Yeah, the, you're. That's like real, real competition. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at least the long distance people were. I was like middle of the pack to some degree, but. Yeah, there, it's it's strange how, you know, so like let's say there's a there's that lead wolf, that that one who's leading the pack. Mm-hmm. Next thing you know, their buddies will be getting around him and and walking with him and and stuff like that. And then the girls will come and the female, and then they start doing their thing. And and next thing you know, they're all trying to be, you know, in that in that four like momentum. Right. And then they all, like all the runners, not all of them, the majority of the runners cut like i'm like they have they get this it's so weird the runner body do you know what i mean by the runner body Mm -hmm. like they look a certain way oh yeah it's not just thin right it's runner body yeah they all get that runner body i I don't know it's just one of the strangest things it's like they turn into a different (laughs) like being or something i don't even know uh metamorphic or yeah no it's seriously like they get too close to each other and they just start turning into each other yeah and (laughs) like i'd have a friend that would come over and, and like sprint side or something like that, or maybe they'd be middle distance. And next thing you know, they'd start getting pulled over. And two months later, they'd be a full blown long distance runner and they'd start to be hanging out at their table. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's crazy. It's a little cult, but just a study on the community. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. I mean, the thought of having people around you that want to do better and stuff, It's like, to me, it's not optional anymore. Mm. I was so okay for so long having people around me that were doing nothing, like nothing. And now it's like, there's no space for that anymore. Yeah. And it's hard. Like, it's very, very hard to let those people go and realize like, they're just, you're not helping me get to where I need to be. Yeah. And what did it for me was like having to think, you're actually working against me. Like, even if you're not intentionally doing it, like you're literally stopping me. You're not just holding me back. Like you are standing in front of me getting to where Mm -hmm. I want to be. And that's, what's hard for a lot of people. And 
but, but the community, the reason I bring that up is because the community is so huge. Mm -hmm. And your community can be you and a buddy. Like, you and two people. You and 50 people. Yeah. Like, just I mean, people that want to do better. When Like, if you're talking being an artist and stuff, just in whether it's um, painting or, or videography or cinematography or music, mm -hmm. like, I, I know... If people got around me for like music playing and stuff like that, which me and you have never even talked about this, mm -mm. but I know if people came around me in a community of music people like playing different instruments and stuff, that would be, that would take over like in my free time, my mm -hmm. life. And I don't know if it was art, if people were, if we were pushing art or if I had more filmmakers around here, there's just not a lot anymore in Lima. If well, there was a push in like a community of mm -hmm. whatever artist, I'd be like, hey, let's go make something cool. Let's yeah. dream. You know what I mean? So let I me ask know. you this, Kent. This is this might seem like it's out of the blue a little bit. Mm -hmm. But when you just said that, like, if there was other people that were, you know, creating this community, then I would want to go be a part of it. I'm curious because you know how I feel. Like I hate when you call me boss. It, tries, <laughs> <laughs> it kills me. Yeah. Jan actually laughed about it. Lish's dad, because mm. um, he heard you say like he hates when I call him that, and he was like, "Yeah, I feel like that's probably not something you like somebody calling you." Yeah. I was like, "I don't." But uh, I'm fun. curious. Like you know how I feel about you know leaders and followers, employees and employers, and all that mm -hmm. stuff. Do you feel like you're somebody that is okay following? Like that as long as you're following the right things, that you're okay following, that you don't necessarily have to be, you know, the head of the snake or right. that See, first I, wolf in the pack. I don't know. And maybe it's because I'm only 23. People who I've worked with, probably in college too, they would definitely have an answer. Um, for you or for them? For me. Oh, okay. Like the ones who've experienced me working on set or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I don't know because I, I, I want to say, well, if I trusted What the, about more in life, though, rather than professional? I don't know that either. Honestly, what I don't know is I, I'm leaning towards one side, mm -hmm. but I'm still holding out hope that I could be a follower given that I trusted them enough, right? Gotcha. That's, that's why I say I don't know. I know who I am. Yeah. I just, I don't know if I've been given the experience to fully trust in someone else someone else's vision i guess to some degree or right. direction right because right? it takes it takes a lot and when you're when you're as cuckoo as i am to some degree <laughs> like you can see in the in the cracks and where where they're falling short or mm -hmm. like i don't know just no it's very it very sucks. hard yeah because because i can't be a part of many teams because mm -hmm. i know the leader i know i'm better than them yeah not sorry not better than them but better than them at at whatever we're doing, yeah, which is might might not be much better. It, it more so like, I know I could put out a, a good product. I know I can do this. I I know if we do this, this, and this, this will result in that, and this will be awesome. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so whenever that comes around, like, and I have to be on a team, it's just it it, it is difficult. Like it's and it's it's genetics to some degree. That's right. how my dad is. I mean, it, nothing I can do about it. Yeah, I. It's a hard thing for me. Like, I've had to completely make up my mind, like, you are the leader in X, Y, or Z, mm. and be like, take it on, that's it. Because I think I am a nat like naturally born kind of a leader personality, but I've also been in a lot of situations where I'm okay being, you know, somewhat of a follower, and it's, I think it's just if you're following the right people a little bit. I'm leaning down that direction because I don't want to be so, you know, so confident in myself to where I know it all in every single facet of life, mm -hmm. right? Whether or not to take this medication or whether or not to, yeah. I don't know anything, right? I just have a lot of what seems to be correct gut feelings, it feels like, you know what I mean? And then, then the ballsiness to actually do it. That's right. another thing though. Most people don't even act like they. Some people don't act. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, I'll just jump in head first and see what happens. That's right. what I did with college. That's what, that's what I, I did with, with everything. everything. Buddy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, <laughs> at some point, you're going to be making so many more actions, engagements, that the someone who waits for that perfect engagement, you're going to be already 
one engagement at least will have taken off by the time they get yeah. one perfect one. Oh, yeah. That's kind of what I feel like. And you'll learn way more. Yeah. The speed of my life is going by, you know, a lot more than them. Yeah. And how boring is that to wait for? I, I just can't wait. I just can't wait. I can't when we have good ideas on yeah. anything with the, like, we're like, okay, let's execute. Okay. Like, so, yep, that so makes what time sense. tomorrow? Execute. Yeah. Yeah. Like that idea? Execute. Yeah. And then we get it wrong half the time. Eh, maybe like or, but, 30% of the time. Yeah. But we, we learn. We get it right a good chunk. Either way, we, it, who said that? Just, someone just said that. Win or learn. Win or learn. Win or learn. Yeah. That was pretty good. Yeah. But uh, that's all there is. Win or learn. We do learn. We do learn a lot. So, off the personal, mm. I'm curious, business, mm-hmm. where do you see us landing in five years? This? Building mm-hmm. Legacy? What's, what's your vision of building Legacy in five years? Because I don't know if you know this or not, but you're at least stuck for five years. <laughs> you, <laughs> yeah. you, did, you did sign something. You don't know about it, but you oh. did sign something. <laughs> oh, my soul. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I see. <laughs> Um, We've been saving your hairs and making a video right, all somewhere. So. Right. <laughs> yeah. I honestly think we don't want to get too much into that. And uh, yeah, we you don't have to, <sighs> Man, you know, don't, that, don't spill all the beans sure. yet. There's some beans that. Yeah, but there, I'm just but curious, like what what you envision it looking like as a whole. Well, firstly, I think I think if we could conquer. If we could gain that home stadium, if we could conquer Lima, mm. I think we could really make some impact, not only for the people, but also for the place. Yeah. I, I seriously do think that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think downtown right now is going through a bit of a, a change, downtown Lima. And I think there would be room to implement some space for us and what we do. And, and, and right. we've talked about setting up runs or whatever Mm -hmm. just somehow engaging the community yeah and hopefully um having some type of you know we'll just leave it to engage the community yeah um and specifically maybe the men of the community just being a larger vehicle yeah and then for change maybe in five years i think that's probably a a safe bet to say conquered lima like to to where everyone knows building legacy right in lima but i would hope it it grows to, I don't want to say, I don't want to say national like levels. Cause I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. You're only one person and this isn't necessarily a, I don't want to turn it. I don't want it to turn into a corporate a mm-hmm. corporation or anything, you know, right. To some degree, I think it should stay small and people should come here. Like it, it's, or wherever we yeah. are, you know what I mean? No, I love like, I, I don't Cam Haynes, what he's been able to build. Like, yeah, that's phenomenal. He doesn't have, like, he has a large follower base now, but I mean, he's been doing it for 15 years or mm-hmm. whatever. But he still, he lives where he started. He lives mm-hmm. in his hometown. He's obviously created massive amounts of change around there. And the people that are interested in his story and, like, you know, uh, rubbing shoulders with him is so that they come to where he's at and they experience his life and how he lives it. Right. And so, and I think it's so freaking cool. And I don't, yeah, I, cool. I truly don't think that Cam Haynes gives a crap about how many followers he has. He doesn't think, look like it. No. He doesn't look like I he think would. that he truly just cares about the fact of, I'm going to do this for me regardless. Mm. And like, I'm going to push myself to be better no matter what. If I can then bring other people with me, great. Dream come true. Which is a, and that's all he cares about. Great model, too, to yeah. follow after. I mean, because that's, that's my thought. I don't think we get there in five years, obviously. But that's, that's my thought of the business model. Because, like, to me, you know, Nick Bear has it, it's turned into more of a business. You know, like, yeah. it's a full time gig. It's a, to me, it's more of a corporation a kind of thing. Yeah. Which is great for him. Like, not knocking him by any means. I've learned a ton from him and followed his content and all that stuff. And there's things that he implements well that we want to mirror. Mm-hmm. But I think the way that Cam Haynes goes about it to where he does his lift run shoots and it's like, come live my life with me. And then hopefully you get benefit from that. That's interesting. You say that because that's somewhat of the definition of a, being a disciple in Christianity, Christian, Christianly speaking, I guess you could mm-hmm. say 
I don't know what that correct word is, but explain what you mean. Well, like the whole idea of discipleship is at least how I understand it. Mm-hmm. There's probably multiple understandings as there is multiple denominations, but living life with somebody and that teaching and that influence as you live mm. is discipleship. I don't gotcha. know. I mean, I, listen, I don't know anything Stop at the end saying of the day. That. You know plenty. Ah, I, I don't, though. Well, you could have said that at your interview, and I might have believed you, but now I've worked with <laughs> you. You know plenty. But uh, it's just funny how it, it still kind of, it's a little parallel, a little bit of a mm-hmm. parallel. But it's the best way. I mean, there's a, you, you can scream and shout on a video at somebody. You can maybe see, see them at an event for an hour. Right. Or you could come live life. And that seems to be the, you know... Even if it's for a few days, just the like the live. What, what do you say? Live front shoot. Live front shoot. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I think it's phenomenal because I, my goal with building legacy is not to turn this into some huge money machine, or mm-hmm. you know, it's not to go get ten million followers so that we can monetize it and build a huge team that just creates a bunch of content and blah 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 blah. Sorry, we should have. A, I just had an idea. Yeah, we should have a count when we put this website up. Mm-hmm. We should have a meter of like lives changed. That should be bigger that than would be sick. New, like followers or anything. That would be. It sick. should just be lives changed. And the, we already have. Yes. Some. We've already had multiple people say stuff to us about just either the content that we've put out so far, or just people around me in general that it's yeah. affecting. Um, yeah, I, I, I just have no desire to turn it into because I feel like yeah. it would lose what it's for. The heart of it. And it's, it's truly just to, cause I don't, I honestly don't care if that counter gets up to 20 people. Like there's not a lot of people that can live their life and be like, I affected and changed 20 lives fair in a positive way. Yeah. Like that's a, that's a chunk. <laughs> um, yeah, but no. So with the other businesses though, like you jumped into this so freaking unaware of like exactly what everything was. Yeah. The speed at things, how things move, not everybody in your shoes could keep up with this. <laughs> that's a, that's funny Just, you say that. I mean, uh, but you think I'm, I'm keeping up? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm. I'm curious how you feel like you're able to, because to me, you have to be a high performing person to keep up with what we do. I'm curious how you feel like you're able to keep up with how fast the business is moving mm-hmm. and all the change that's happening and the growth that we're experiencing and everywhere. And well, you have to know your job. I think that's what it first comes down to. If I, if well, I didn't I know my job, I didn't give you a very good job description at first. Cause I never hired for it. Yeah. So you kind of figured your own job. out. Yeah. I don't even know if I'm doing, <laughs> I didn't necessarily mean that like yeah. a creative director job. Mm-hmm. Cause obviously I've never been a creative director before, but, um, cameras, I know a camera inside and out. Right. I know how it works. I know how to manipulate it. Yeah. Lights, got it. Uh, editing software, mm-hmm. got it. Um, different softwares mm-hmm. using it stuff. Like even AI, I got to get into that. Yeah. I, that's like on my learning list right now. Mm-hmm. And that's the other thing is you can't stop learning. You always, like in every situation, I'm not going, well, I don't know how to do this, so I might as well just quit. Right. That's just... We got to sit there and we got to we got to rake our mind to figure it out. Like it, I introduced you to ChatGPT and now you're just every time I come up here, you you're didn't on introduce there doing me. Something. You reintroduced me. Oh, okay. I didn't know you'd I, yeah. that you'd ever seen it. Well, I had tried to like break in. I tried to give it consciousness one time, but <laughs> have you seen the Westworld? No. Oh, dude, a great show. I, I have asked it questions where it's like I'm a language. You know, yeah. Very auto, like I'm not responding. To I that. was close, but. No, nah, it wasn't close, but it was funny. Me and my buddy were trying to. But either way, even if I reintroduced you, I've seen you like take oh, off yeah. with it, and you're doing way more than you were. Yeah, I mean, a it's, month ago. Well, it's an amazing tool, but know your tools. Uh, not necessarily know your job. Know your tools, mm-hmm. and then you know, like if if we need something, what's the quickest way? What's the most quality way? I don't know. It just kind of falls through this processor, and if you had no, if you have enough tools, like we got a hammer, a screwdriver. I got right. some metal in over there and a wood. Right. You know, I can figure out what, how to use the tools I have, whether it be a camera and then the editing stuff or, or a certain light or you got the backdrop. That's mm-hmm. the other tool. Capital. Right. Got to have capital to be creative. And uh, Yeah, I learned quick. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. But look what we've made. You yeah. know what I mean? It's freaking awesome. And you can't do this. 
I mean, that was one of the problems when I was freelancing is you got to have gear. You got to have, you know, you got to have demo footage and, and portfolio pieces and stuff. And sometimes you literally can't afford to do a portfolio piece. Like it, you can't. So what do you say then to the, to the guy that's, you know, watching this, that's like, damn, I was interested in video, but now I feel like I can't take it on. Like what's the, what's the solution for them? What's the first step? Honestly, if you're doubting yourself now, you better just quit and change up. That's probably sad, but it's probably, it's, it is, it's the most, if someone would have told me that and I would have trusted them and believed them, um, I would thank them because it is a, it is a monotonous job. Um, it can be fun and there is art behind it. Right. But it's one of those things where it's like, you can use all that time. Like the time that I've spent learning this stuff is, mm -hmm. it would blow your mind that there's, there's time spent in the technicality part of it. Right. And then also, but in the ph philosophical part and in the art part, mm -hmm. like that, the amount of time it would disgust you. And you could take that time. Like I see it now. You could take all that time and you could become a master at something mm -hmm. like it, it. It's not even, it's just a label being, you know, videographer or being right. a creative director. It's, a pool of time, like a, like a fluid pool of time that you choose which place to put it in. I should have did something like, I don't even know, something with money or, or like if I did stocks, mm -hmm. I'd probably be a millionaire by now. Like if I just, uh, okay. if I took all that time and said, you know what, we're learning stocks and I'm going to, I'm going to, that's but all I'm going to do. you started putting in that time when? Five years ago then high about? High school, at, at the end of high school, maybe junior year. It's about high five school. or six years ago? Yeah. So, and this is just me asking, mm -hmm. you're 23, mm -hmm. so why not go from 23 to 29 and do it all over again, but in something else? I do it all the time. I learned guitar senior year. Like, and I haven't but, stopped. Like, well, I, I'm I, saying, I, I do, I do right. tons of different things. Right. I'm saying, like, well, maybe I'm misunderstanding a little bit. So what I'm understanding is, mm -hmm. like, I have all this time invested into something I might as well monetize it and make it work for me and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Why not go take, you know, that time and put it into something else that you feel like is better suited for you? Well, the time is spent. I'm having, I, I see I'm, what you're saying. The time okay. has been... I see what you're saying. Because there's a certain time in life, right? and this might be great for fathers, uh, this you know, looking back on my life, there is a time where you can dedicate a stupid amount of hours in your life that, that don't, you don't really have to pay for. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like the it, yeah. time now is a lot more expensive than time then. For sure. And knowing that, and it, but it's like at the end of the day, you don't know what you're going to do for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And to, to put on an 18 year old, you know, figure out what you're going to do. You have one yeah. shot. Yeah. That's insane. Right. But maybe, I don't know. But so also, you, it's it was it's been a good it's been a good ride so far. Right. So I don't want to be too pessimistic about it because I've shot some beautiful things. I've connected with tons of people. Right. I, I've. Do you yeah. feel like storytelling then, in general, like, is something that you could see yourself doing for? I will do it for the rest of my life. Yeah. Yeah. I'll probably be dead if I don't. Like it, it just it. There's no. I think some people. Having an having an innate desire to like know what they're put on the earth for, mm -hmm. and I've I've always thought that's somewhat of mine. And art is the is the vehicle, and video just seems to be the thing I'm using that day. Like that's right. the vehicle. Yeah, like, that type of art is the vehicle for the day. No, and I but think there's that also music. There's also painting. There's also whatever. Yeah, writing. Right. I think that you as a person in general, like surprise all of us because you are 23, but that helps explain why you surprise us. Because the fact that you are saying like at 23, I've known that storytelling is the thing that, you know, I've, I have a passion for. I've have this innate ability to like, know this is my path and this feels right for me. That grounds you a ton at that age. Like if I, when I had football, very grounded, straight A student, 
never. Drugs, alcohol, girls, never even a thought. As soon as I lost what grounded me in my purpose, I was all over the place. I was scrambling everywhere mm -hmm. and, you know, making every mistake possible. Well, I, but I think it uh, makes you a, a very mature 23 year old and a very grounded person. I think at the end of the day, um, when you know you're an artist, you just know. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, I don't think it's something you can fake for sure. I, I can't, I don't think artists, and like I haven't, you know, necessarily been a professional artist. Like I sell paintings and I live mm -hmm. the art life type of thing, the David Lynch art life. <laughs> Not necessarily. Like I gotta eat too. I gotta. I gotta. I'm trying to still do what's right. As in, you know, maybe it's go to college and learn and set yourself up for the right. work life and stuff, right? So there is a bit of that there too. But at the heart of who I am, I think it is. I'm an artist, and I like I'd be lying to myself if I said I wasn't. So every everything, if I'm not shooting, if I have a week where I'm not shooting mm -hmm. and I have time, I'm painting. Like the canvas plastic is coming off. Right. I'm painting. I can't. You can't not, or, or the, the guitar's coming out. I'm writing a song. It, it's, creation is not an option. It, it's like create or die in a way. Mm -hmm. So like even now, like all the business things that I've learned through doing freelance for a bit, coming here, like, you know, soaking up everything you say, mm -hmm. it is all coming, it comes back to how it can kind of push the art forward in a way. Which is strange, but that is, that's purpose for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think that's what we're all doing. I think that's what I'm doing, what Dakota's doing, what you're mm. doing. I think that we're all using each other and, you know, soaking up the best from every, mm. each of us and pushing our own agendas forward. Yeah. And that's exactly why you need those people around you. Yeah, you're not wrong. Like you need passionate, purpose driven people. Yeah. Cause look what that's doing, man. Like, you have a passion for art and expressing yourself and telling a story. I don't have that passion at all, mm -hmm. <laughs> like 0%. But I have a passion for wanting to affect and change people's lives. Right. You have the ability to take my story and push it forward. Like I'm giving you tools to drive your art forward. Dakota is, exactly right. you know what I mean? He's bringing his stuff to the table and we're all just pulling from each other. And that's part of the reason why it's like, I hate the whole idea of like employer employee, because to me, it's yeah. literally just opportunity, opportunity, opportunity. Like mm. I'm giving somebody an opportunity to come do what they're really good at. And they're giving me the opportunity to help myself by bringing them yeah, on the team. It's what's the word? It's a uh, type of, Symbiotic or Symb not? Yeah, symbiotic. Almost something like that. No, it's um. Oh, I know what you're talking about. No chance. Where they uh, where they're both feeding each other. Yes, not parasitic. That's parasites. Symbiotic is along the right lines, but it's not. And I'll get stuck on that if I'm yeah, trying to. I don't know. I know exactly what you're but saying. It is that type of relationship, mm -hmm. and it's if you don't have that in your life, you're missing something. You know what I mean? If you don't have that group, if you don't have yeah. the that's well, I guess why. because then either you're just a giver or you're just a taker. Yeah, at the end of the day. Yeah. That's why one of the reasons why freelancing is so hard it sucks. Mm -hmm. it just like you're it's, not getting a lot back from that other side. Yeah, I mean, you so are taking, you are taking, all taking, four taking, animals. Taking, taking. That, that if you're doing it individually, you're all four. Oh right. And it's like that drains at the end of the day, and yeah. that might be a conversation for another time. Like the, all the four animals. Yeah. The the, the fox, the bear, mm -hmm. the cheetah, the cheetah lion. lion. That's what. We need to talk to uh, this girl about mm. that's coming on. Oh, yeah. It's been it's crazy. It's crazy how much it's, it's held true. It's crazy. Let's talk about it. Sure. I feel like we, we that's a fine thing to bring up right now because yeah. it's a huge business tool that we've implemented. So, obviously, you know this, but we'll go through the whole backstory of it. So, I've spent the last like month and a half, two months really diving into the psychology and like mindsets and stuff like that behind high performing individuals and just CEOs and business people and all that stuff just to try to be a better leader. I came across a video of the ex CIA agent who now does business coachings for CEOs and What's high level name? individuals. I can't remember his name. He Not was on Tom hair. Bilyeu. Yeah, he was on Tom Bilyeu. He's been on a few different podcasts too that I've came across since then, but his, um, what he was talking about was that 
us as human beings are so predictable, it's like laughable to the CIA. He's like, and if you don't think that you're one of those people, you're lying to yourself. And that they have ways of basically breaking down the pieces of our lives into, you know, a few different chunks, yada, yada. And they use those chunks to help navigate, to get into your world and get into your entire infrastructure of your life. And he was saying one of the most basic ways is as an interview type of question that you, you can take what the CIA does and implement it into your businesses. They have like an interview question to where they ask, if I were to ask you to tell me about your perfect vacation and how you would go about planning it, give me your answer. And there's no right or wrong answers. His concept was that there's four different types of animals. There's lions. Well, not his concept, the CIA's concept. Mm -hmm. There's lions, bears, cheetahs, and foxes. And depending on how people answer, you can put them in one of those four categories. The lion was the hyper-organized uh, systems, processes, structure person. The bear was your relational person that cares more about like the relationship and um, the personal side of business and creating those bonds. And then there was the cheetah who was the action taker, like, let's just get it done. Give me direction. I'll go knock it out. And then there was the fox who was the creative um, person in general. So... Examples of those answers would be like your lion would answer and say, you know, I would make a list of the top 10 places. I would look at restaurants. I'd follow Yelp reviews. I'd get on TripAdvisor, blah, blah, blah. Your bear would say like, oh, I want to talk to my husband and see what he thinks. Ask my friends, put a post on Facebook, see what everybody else liked. Your cheetah would say, I'm going to get the hell up and go to the beach. Like, I'm just going to go. I don't know what I'm going to do when I get there, but I'm just going to go. Dakota's answer, <laughs> spot on. <laughs> and then... Uh, the fox would have a bunch of different ideas of like, well, maybe we could go and do this, or when we get there, we could go and do that. Cam's answer was, you know, maybe it'd be really cool if we like went up to the mountains, maybe brought some rock climbing gear, brought some friends, maybe park our vans in a circle. Oh, maybe we could like have a fire and camp out, and, and like had all these different ideas. Nicole answered, well, I'd post, put a post on Facebook and see what everybody else thought. And then my answer, because I had just got done planning my honeymoon not that long ago, I did create the list and I you know, went through and watched videos on every place and blah, blah, blah. But the concept of it is if you know that, you can interview people and know who you're hiring and what position to put them in and put them in positions that are best suited for them. Yep. We've done that now. We went through... And thankfully, between me, you, Dakota, and Nicole, who are like the key players in Easy right now, we covered all four animals. But me as a lion, if I was going to look for a partner in another business, I wouldn't necessarily want to go get another lion because they're just going to be sitting there doing all the systems and processes and stuff with me. I probably want to go find a cheetah that's going to be able to go execute on those things. Mm -hmm. And it's been powerful shit. Like that one yeah. little framework has been powerful. Well, it's like it's truer than true. It, it's yeah, and it's, it's so the simple. Framework. Of, it's so simple. I, I I really I don't know how I've summed up into four categories. Yeah, is it really four categories? Is that what we reduced to? We like, it's crazy. well, he said it's laughable how predictable people are. It's crazy, and like how much the CIA knows how predictable we are, and they just added a couple of those layers. Like, imagine if we knew the second layer to that. Yeah. We know how to figure out what animal they are. And then imagine if it was like, okay, now there's another layer where you can even know more exactly what type of person they are. And it, it might sound simple, but we have asked at least eight people now. You four, five, yeah, eight or nine people like mm -hmm. in the businesses. And it has held true every single time. Yeah. And it's like been they spot just don't on. fall outside of that. They only <laughs> fall within the, and it's it crazy, like, looking mind. at their answers side by side, you're like, that is, like, almost the exact same answer. But but even, it goes beyond just work. Like, how you interact with someone knowing what, what classification they are. Mm -hmm. It's how their brain works. It's how they overcome, you know, Imagine problems. if I knew that going into the phone call with you. <sighs> well, now that I think about it, though, honestly light bulb moment right now. Hmm. That's why I was able to sell you on the idea. 
Oh yeah, could you? Well, you pitched to a fox. I pitched yeah. you to. I pitched a fox, and I gave yes. you nothing but ideas of we could do this, we yeah. could do that, we could tell, change lives, we could tell this story, we could. That's that's funny. Yeah. Instead of compared to maybe that pitch, if I gave it to Dakota, you have to be here he'd be at this like, time. dude, I don't know. like. Okay. Yeah. Cool, but like, what do you need me to do? Yeah, overwhelmed for sure. <laughs> just like that sounds like a lot of stuff. How about you just tell me one thing that we're gonna do, and I'll tell you if that sounds good right. or not. Or like maybe for someone like Nicole, it's the community. Look at all the look at what we do. Look mm-hmm. at that. look at all the people we work with. And a all big the thing for culture. Nicole. God, it's this is nuts. I'm having like a like a come to Jesus revelation. moment right yeah. now. I interviewed Nicole. I sat at Vibe Coffee House for like five hours or six hours straight. I interviewed like eleven or twelve people for Nicole's job, Jeez. all in the same day, back to back to back to back to back to back to back. Nicole's the only person I offered the job to. She turned me down. What? She did? Yeah. I had like three very serious candidates. The one girl was like so overqualified. It was disgusting. And I was just like, you might be overqualified. And it, <laughs> for me, it was just like, I didn't know exactly what her job was going to look like at the time because mm-hmm. at the time I was hiring for an executive assistant. Like I just needed somebody I could throw into like every business and help me do stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, Nicole, I offered her the freaking job. And the next day she texted me or emailed me back and I was like, I'm so sorry. I have to decline. Like, I'm just really secure where I'm at right now and blah, 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 blah. Dang. Dude. But during the interview, I had known that she had brought up, like she wasn't happy with her bosses. She had a really bad situation with the previous boss and like, she didn't like the people she was working with, but she was just there because of the security and blah, blah, blah. blah. Mm -hmm. And without even realizing it, my pitch to her was like, listen, I can promise you like you would never deal with that with me like and we're not going anywhere it's going to be just as secure and there'll be a lot of opportunity for you to move up and stuff but I promise you like what you went through with your other bosses you will never deal with it like I will only treat you with respect and blah blah blah, mm-hmm. blah. and I did I pretty much gave her like a hey and I even had mentioned well, she's like, still here so I had mentioned like the guys like will know better than to like try to treat you the way that they had treated like the employees around you that you're going to be working with will never do that, blah, blah, blah. And I didn't even know I was pitching to a bear. And it just, just happened. Guess. But it just happened to be like, what, a year later, a year and a half later, they were like, well, that makes sense that she was worried about those things. Mm-hmm. And that that's the thing that made her decide to come on board with us. Yeah, it's freaky. Have you ever taken a... I uh, wonder if it translates into personal life. Because they said they did say that's like a business thing. Because in my personal life, I am not the lion. My wife is the lion. My wife is the organized. Oh yeah, I'm not like a hyper organized person in my personal life. Hmm. Yeah. Which they touched on there. Like it doesn't always go both ways as far as business and personal. Hmm. That's strange. Yeah, I feel like you're probably pretty creative and personally in business. <laughs> Can't really help it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Dakota's kind of, you're probably like cheetah personality in your personal life too, right? No? What do you think that you would be? Like what animal would you be in your personal life? Because you're definitely the cheetah in business. How do I turn? Slide. No, 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 no. Pausing while Dakota figures out how to turn the mic up. Even with the other ones. I'm kind of a fox. No, no, no. Closer with your face. (laughs) <laughs> there you go. Sorry. That's what there we go. Said. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of a fox. Like I like the marketing stuff. I just, but it's more. Of oh a, yeah, I did know that. A hobby. I'm yeah, not, you like doing like logos. That's and true. I'm not real organized at home. Um, I'm a, like a clean. You're not real organized anymore, man. <laughs> <Yeah, I know. laughs> I'm. I mean, I'm a clean person and like yeah. take care of my stuff. But I think fox um, sounds right. Yeah, I've I'm seen not really a cheetah person because I like to chill out when I'm at That's home. true. And he draws right. too. So mm-hmm. yeah, I've seen his drawings. Yep. I bet you Fox is probably one of the only that is like the same on both, I would think. Because I bet you Nicole is definitely more of a lion personality in her personal life. Ooh, I bet you. Yeah. She's definitely the coordinator of her life. Did you turn that down? Got it. Look at you. Well, Cam... If you decide that you're going to go join a band now, <laughs> we got you covered. 
What you mean? Oh, you got the sound mixer back <laughs> <Yeah>. there? <laughs> Dakota's stepping in no problem. We just found out he's a fox. He's a beast on the That's ones and true. twos over here. I can, <laughs> I can be like uh, Jamie, too. I'm over here looking up stuff that you guys were asking Boom. about. Boom. There you the go. The CIA guy was Andrew Bustamante. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Check that Andrew out. Bustamante. And it was symbiotic relationships. Boom. <laughs> there you go. Very good. Nailed it. Very good. Wow. I, th- I still think there's another word that I was trying to think of, but either way. I don't know. I keep thinking. But yeah, that, that that's, a, was that's a little nugget for somebody for sure, because if you've never heard that before, I'm telling that you, is crucial. implement it in your business. Try it. If there's somebody that you have in accounting and you're like, this person sucks, like why are they not getting it? Go ask him that interview question, and it might be because you have a fox working in accounting where yeah. they just need to be very detail oriented, and this is not suited for them at all. Yep. Or you know whatever the job is. Yeah, it's been the problem with me for jobs in the past, like for me, because People it, they're, they're not fox jobs. Like mm-hmm. they're, and it's, it's nails on a chalkboard living for a while at that job. Right. For me, at least, like I can do it. I can mm-hmm. suffer through anything. I've always said that I can suffer through anything. But it is just not a, like, you know, like a, what do they call? It's not a thriving life. It's not like, it's right. like, it's just like suffering. <laughs> you know? That's like my favorite word nowadays. What, suffering? Yes. Yeah. It holds so Dakota, do you like to true. suffer with Deco- uh, Devin over here in these runs? <laughs> I'm still not enjoying that. <laughs> He's you do suffer quite a bit, though, with all these I runs. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. But I'm telling you, it's, running. I don't know if I told you about this. And like, once again, it's hard to like talk about some stuff because it sounds like douchebag Bracky. shit to me sometimes. Yeah. But I mean, the only way to make it relatable is to just be honest about it. Right. So there is a Pause. Dakota, touch my oh. laptop. Said so touch, touch my laptop. Touch the. Just touch it. There you, there you go. go. Okay. But no, the only like way is just tell it and like no. stop giving a shit if somebody's going to be like, oh, he's fucking bragging. I know I'm not bragging, but I'm, I'm not that person. Like during football at my peak, when I was absolute best, I hated anything that was hard. Mm. I was always so naturally good at every sport and all that stuff. I hated doing the hard stuff. Like I hated yeah. doing the cardio. I hated doing the leg lifts and all that shit. I really have leaned into and like thoroughly enjoy the suffering part of it now, which is so fucking weird to say. Hmm. I was running. Who was I telling that to? I can't remember if it was you or somebody. Else. When I was laughing at my knee, did yeah, I tell you about me. that? Yeah. yeah. Like That's I was running and my knee was seriously hurting. And I just knew that I was going to finish the, I think it was like a six mile run and I was like two miles in. And I was running on a trail by myself and literally staring at my knee, cracking up. And I was like, somebody's going to think that I'm fucking insane right now if they've seen me. But I was just laughing that I I knew that that wasn't going to stop me anymore. Like, I just, Uh I was like, that's hilarious that that held me back for so long. And it's really not even that bad. It's uncomfortable. Right. Yeah. What were you going to say, Dakota? It's a little psychotic. (laughs) It's, (laughs) It's, I... By no means am I anywhere close to where David Goggins is, but I'm telling you, I understand that man more and more every day. Mm -hmm. Because when he says, like, no, I'm not psychotic, I'm not a machine, I'm not just built different, I built this motherfucker, and it's not even me. Like, Mm. it's Goggins, and I'm David. I'm not there yet, for sure. That's interesting. That is, that, that is... He's divided himself into two people. Yeah. That is the point that I would like to get to, though, in my life is to the point that I'm like, it doesn't matter what Devin quit on or like whatever, that I have this other guy that I know can get through whatever. Hmm. Because then what? Well, then what's the cap? Yeah, who knows? Hopefully it's a pool full of money and everyone's healthy and And we're all swimming in it. Yeah. Be nice. Are we clothed during this one? Um... Dakota won't be. <laughs> Dakota is Dakota's definitely the first person to rip his shorts off at a party. Oh yeah. 100%. Been skinny to been before. Yeah. <laughs> Probably uh, at somebody's like super chill birthday party too. <laughs> yeah. Grandparents were there. Just Dakota had three wine coolers. It was like, it's party time. But no, I, 
it's good like every just talking to, this is obviously the the longest that we just had got to talk mm-hmm. uninterrupted mm-hmm. but it's good to know that, that like we have people on our team that have the same mindset yeah it's not even like I had a choice either to some degree. It kind of feels like yeah. Some people just get burdened with it. Yeah. And there's no there's no sense in dodging it. Yeah. It's like if you if you dodge it you live in purgatory. That's kind of the thing. And I'm sure there's people out there cuz I was doing somewhat of that thing for a long time. How do you feel about suffering right now then? Um Okay, we'll go a little bit more of a question. What do you mean? So do you because you're saying that you want to grow like you want to get the best out of yourself, right? Yes. Do you believe that suffering is the only way that you're going to get to that or do you feel like there is a route to get there that doesn't involve suffering? I think I think it may be a bit of both. Like right now the caffeine cutting the caffeine out. Mhm. Um I'm trying to fix that energy problem. Uh partially so I can be more cognizant by the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Like after 5. Right. Cuz that's brutal. Because I'm basically sitting there for the rest of the day going, I'm unproductive. My brain doesn't work. Yeah, like I I, I can't do anything. I just have to sit here and exist until I'm tired enough to go to bed. Mm -hmm. That sucks. Um, Especially when, like, you're not doing anything. Um, So I'm trying to fix the the energy problem so I can get up at 5, no coffee, no caffeine. We're done with that. It's a drug. We don't want drugs in our body at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's first and foremost. We're working away from it. So once I can say I'm done with that, oh my gosh, Ben Swartz today said um, he takes um, ice baths in the morning, six minute ice ice bath, mm-hmm. and that's a caffeine replacement. He says it does the same thing without the crash. I've heard that they say that it like keeps your levels up for like all day. Uh, I just actually was shopping for um, plunges on mm-hmm. Amazon, but the actual cold plunge one is like forty five hundred dollars. But it like requires no ice, and it's like an actual bathtub, and it like oh, blah blah blah. Oh. But then like they have yeah, they have the <laughs> buckets that you just dump ice into. Yeah, I'm like, how many bags of ice would I have to buy before that paid for itself? But anyways, yeah. Um, where was I going with that? Anyway, I oh yeah. So there are there's different avenues. Some avenues need suffering. Like there's the only the cost of the ticket is suffering, mm-hmm. and it, I I feel like. And that was true for me with college and, I mean, just, just school in general was suffering for me. Right. But lots of track, which is how I paid for college. I didn't mm-hmm. want to do it. I, I mean, the moment that I – I don't want to say the moment that I was given an out. The moment that it was a serious question between, okay, my degree or track and then do more schooling, I chose my degree and, like, mm-hmm. dropped track. And that was the, uh, the very last semester. Um. There are some roads I think you got to suffer down, but then there are some where you can get smarter. I feel like, I mean, maybe I'm suffering now with the caffeine headaches just a little bit, but that mm-hmm. that you, you know what I mean. That's not real yeah. suffering. Yeah. Um, I think there is room to become smarter and to learn. Um, and once you learn, you can't be ignorant because you mm-hmm. you'll have that you'll have your conscience in your head going. You know what that does, you know what that does, every single time. Every single time, and it, or at least for me, that's how yeah. it is. It's like I the blinders are off. Um, but yeah, I'm okay suffering through the things that need to be suffered through. But I'm all in due time, though. I, I will say. But are you in the more of the mindset of like work smarter, so you don't have to work harder? Um, I'm probably more in that camp. Yeah, yeah. I usually try to outthink people, like in whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm like a thinker rather yeah. than a. I will say like. <sighs> It's, I, it, I've been, that's what I try to do most of my life. Mm-hmm. Cause I, most of the time felt like I was one of the smarter people in the room and I tried to outthink my way through everything and nothing stuck, hmm. like nothing stuck until I learned hard lessons through suffering. Yeah. And then, cause it's shit that everybody knows. Like everybody knows, go to sleep, get good rest. Don't drink caffeine. Don't do drugs. Don't do Yeah. Everybody knows literally the entire game plan to be completely successful and live a perfect life. You're Everybody knows the entire playbook. It's so interesting. But how many we people s- implement it? We are interesting creatures. Yeah, like man. who doesn't know the playbook to be happy, successful, healthy? All of us. I don't know. But I feel like that's why people, you know, some people have to be 
600 pounds before they're like, oh, my God, yeah. I got to stop. Yeah. Some You're people have to there's a, there's a go breaking through three limit. divorces before they're like, I need to treat women better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there must be some breaking point for some people. I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's the same, it's the same weird, conversation man? for the, de- implement, uh, the implementation for desire or like a mm-hmm. sp- spawning desire. Right. Like how, I don't know. I don't know if you can ever really know. I'm not sure. Yeah. But, well, Cam, uh, you know how I like to end these. Yes, I do. Did you come prepared? I, for one, at least. Okay. Um, so, I've, that one pretty much. Okay. Yeah, I did. I like just because I like getting new quotes. Mm-hmm. Like, well, there's been I quotes that have already. legit changed my freaking life. Well, you haven't told everybody though. That's true. So, quote. So the quote is. Um, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. Mm-hmm. That's something my dad has said for a long time, um, and it's a it's a very vague quote, but I think it kind of refers to you don't necessarily have to be the best to win. You just kind of got to be. You don't need to. You don't need to be the the most talented or the most most money, most whatever most vision in life that you know Mm -hmm. you can as long as you got something that something can get you there that something can let you win give you the opportunity to win and it's it's at least more than what most people have Mm -hmm. that's what it means to me at least that's what i've always thought about and one thing that while you were explaining that too that i didn't think about the last time that you you had actually the first time that you told me about that quote is it's almost like a skill set too like if you have one skill set yep that nobody else has, you can still be the king. Yep. Like, if you're good at sales, you can still go crush it. Yeah. If you're just a better marketer than other people, just lean into that and still be king. Yeah, it's all about, well, I guess that's supply and demand, ain't it? Yeah. To some degree, but. Yeah. But yeah. last question. Building this legacy. one you're prepared. We'll see. Uh, a little bit. Oh, is okay. this not the regular question? Yeah, that's okay. the regular okay. question. Okay. I should give you some off the wall. Yeah. Just... What's your biggest fear in life? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so building legacy. like, What does it mean? What exactly does building legacy mean and look like for you? Um, probably just... It wouldn't be long. It wouldn't. I don't think mine exists long, much longer than my understanding of my reality. Like I, as you in, mean, like it dies with you? Almost. Maybe it dies after the things that I don't come in contact with, or something like that. But something along the lines of to have my son, to have my son love me as much as I love my dad, or mm-hmm. respect and, and fear to some degree. Well, that doesn't die with you. You're not wrong. And that trend, that trend could be yeah, a legacy, but absolutely. if I could get that, I think I, that would be enough for me. I think that would be it. That if your son looked at you the way that you look at your dad. Yep. And that's, that's to me, that's kind of what I hear when I think of all this. And how do you think that your dad looked at his dad? Um, probably not, not as, not as well as I think of him. I guess I, I yeah. um, without getting into extreme detail, I, I, there was definitely a lack of, a lack of responsibility or, or the responsibility was left on the table to some degree. And, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, but well, it sounds like that that is your legacy right now, or at least it's the legacy that your dad has started and that you might build off of. Yeah. Yep. That's a pretty damn good legacy. Yeah. Cause if, for your son to, like it, from the way that you talk about your dad, for your son to look at you that same way, you'd have to do a lot of things right. That's what I'm saying. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't. That's a just fine legacy to me. Yeah, it's, that would be, that'd be hard to attain, but right. that's the goal. Yeah. Well, Cam, I appreciate you walking four feet over here yep. from your desk. a long walk. No, I'm excited to have more of these. Yeah. Like I want to keep these going and have, you know, some more updates and get more into the business aspect sure. of things now that we have a good foundation. Yep. These guys know kind of what you're about, what we're about, and uh we can start getting them a little more into the nooks and crannies of what's going on, what we're building. Yeah. As far as the business is going and stuff like that. 
but let's walk Dakota through this here real okay. quick. So Dakota, keep it on one there. There you go. You're on one. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching. Um, happy to introduce Cam to everybody. He is wise beyond his years and he doesn't even know it. But uh, if you guys liked any of this, man, keep following us. We're going to keep cranking stuff out. We're going to keep trying to drop knowledge that we have, that we gain. We're going to keep trying to bring on people that are better than us to, to keep pouring into this bucket so we can keep sharing it with everybody. So um, as always, get out there and make your last name mean something.